Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Have you seen the Kitchen Table Stamper Shortcut Card Sketches? These card sketches are available at KitchenTableStamper.com. I'll link you below. And we have a series that has two sketches in it right now. And you can print it off and make your card. So this is my shortcut card sketch. This is the card we're gonna make today. And then let me show you. I'm gonna to link to this one. There's This is a project sheet that's available. This is how we do the project sheets at the Kitchen Table Stamper. They've got a full color photo of the card, measurements, and then a supply list. And you can print this one out. Look at this. This is another um, of that card sketch. And then let me show you a third version. I love these card sketches. They make getting started with your paper crafting really easy. Here's another one that we made not too long ago and I'll link to these cards in the blog post. The blog post is accessible by clicking the project details link in the description below. All right, let's get started. You know what? Let's take this out and put this here. All right, the details for this sketch say that you'll need an eight and a half by five and a half um, card base, it's scored at four and a quarter, and I have pool party here for my card base. And then B, B is five cardstock or designer series paper strips that are three quarters by four and a half inches. And I have these. So two of these are garden green cardstock. And three of them are the Sweet Christmas Designer Series paper. So there you go. You can put these out however you like across the sketch, right? So that's A and B. Let me set those aside for a minute. C. So C is a shape, any shape of your choice, approximately two and a half by two and a half. Of course, you could go a little bit bigger. Um, you could take a smaller shape and cut it in half and spread it out behind layer D. So there's all kinds of options for this, but for my choice this time, I've got this great square punch, this decorative square. It's called the handmade tag punch and it's from the current 2022 holiday catalog. I punched it out of pool party cardstock. And then D for our sketch is any shape of your choice. It's for your sentiment. So I've got this little um, dovetail banner it's actually a big dovetail banner it's the largest one and we cut that with the stylish shapes dies from basic white so there's my pieces and my sketch and let's get started with this now i'm going to add one little layer to this and that's the nice part about these sketches they're about getting you started they're, you don't have to do it exactly of course you can do the sketch this way or you could do it this way you could do it this way. You could mirror it entirely, flip everything to the other side. It's a place to get you started. And you'll notice that I added a deckle edge white layer to my card. So there's no reason, no rules that say that you cannot um, use this sketch as a place to start and then make your own um, individual uh, creative adjustments as necessary. So I cut this large decal rectangle. I don't have a die chart for this one yet. We're working on it. This is the deckled rectangles dies from Stampin' Up. These are in the annual 2022-2023 annual catalog. And I just cut the largest one from Basic White Cardstock. It's a great nested set of rectangles with a really cool kind of random jagged edge. Let me put it against before it's embossed so you can see that fun detail. I'm gonna emboss this with the Whimsical Trees, Whimsical Forest, I don't remember the name, <laughs> 3D embossing folder. It is also from the holiday catalog. It's 3D, so we're going to use one and four. I'm just gonna pop this in so that my deckle edge is kind of along this Stampin' Up! line, that means my trees will be going in a, um, in a straight up and down line. We won't have any uphill or downhill trees. Pop on four, give it a crank. And while we're embossing, I'm gonna get the Mary Melody 3D embossing folder. 
And I'm gonna add a second pattern, a second texture. Look at that awesome whimsical trees. Aren't those so cute? You'll see my green, garden green strips have music pattern on it. And so I love the idea with this sketch of use all designer shears paper, use all cardstock scraps, or mix the two and emboss the, the strips if you like, or stamp on them. There's many different variations and little things, customizations that you can do to make each card, although having that shortcut, um, the, the place to jump in of the sketch, every time you do the sketch, it can look a little bit different. All right, now let's take a look at these. I love this folder. Now we've got our music pattern. I love all the different textures with the designer series papers. All right, let's get some liquid glue, our card base and designer series paper strips. And we're gonna go ahead and adhere like the sketch. So here's our extra little layer because crafty girls do what they want. We're gonna put that one on there, centered. And then I like to add my cardstock layers next because they're so solid. I'm going to layer the designer series papers over the edges of these a little bit. So we're going to go kind of centered with enough room here to add designer series paper in the center to cover it. I think that's good placement. A little bit higher though. There. Now I'm going to put some adhesive on my center strip, cover the gap, and then I'm going to add these polka dot ones on the edge here. And you'll see that it covers both edges of the cardstock. The cardstock is a little bit more bold because of its solid nature. So I like to put the designer series papers over and I toggle them a little bit. I don't add them on perfectly straight. They got a little bit of an angle. That way you don't have to worry about if it's all lined up perfectly straight. You could put them straight across. You could do it toggled for one time you do the sketch and perfectly straight like they're pictured on the sketch the next time all kinds of different ways to just make this look different every time you do it. All right, time to do some stamping. And I'm using the spruced up bundle. I love this new bundle. It's just so bold and fun. It's got solid images, some um, whimsical greetings, and a very cool die set. You can bundle spruced up stamp set with the spruced up outlines dies. And what you'll notice about these dies is the die cuts out the image, but it also cuts a tiny little outline. I'll show you when we do it. Then you can mix the inside and the outside. It just gives you some great design possibilities and makes each time you use this bundle um, unique and different. It's photopolymer, so we're gonna get our Stampin' Pierce map, some basic white cardstock, and garden green ink. We're gonna do one of the smaller trees and one of the larger trees. And I recommend when you're doing a real solid image stamp like this that you pat, tap. And then when you go to get the final ink, your last tap, just kind of roll. And that way you don't suck all the ink back into the pad by creating a vacuum when you lift up. And it'll give you a little bit more, a little bit better chance at getting a good solid image from these. Also a properly inked pad, not too much, not too little, is gonna help when you have very solid images. But you'll notice that I just kind of rock back and forth to pick up the ink on those final, final taps. Because when you pull up like this, the ink will be vacuumed back into the pad. So just a couple of little tips from lots of years of stamping to get the most solid, solid images. Now, slide these to the side. Let's get our greeting. It's a two-part greeting, so you could do it in different colors. 
And this two part stamping, I like to start with my longer part of the grading, whether it's the top line or the bottom line. And then I've got the camera right in my face, so I'm gonna try and get this level. But we're gonna stamp it off to the right and hopefully level across. And then the shorter part of the greeting that'll either be center justified, left justified, or right justified, it's easier to add the shorter bit after. And of course you can do this in multicolor, which is part of what's cool about this stamp set. As you can mix up the greeting, you can do Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas. There's our greeting. So cute. Last one, they're gonna change ink pads. And it got this fun little decorative uh, image and it's perfect for stamping across this round bobble, like it would be the band for that, but we're gonna use it on our handmade tag. And it's gonna go past the edge just a little bit, so let's get some good paper to protect our surface. And I'll stamp off the top edge and then make a second row and I'm just lining up the dots so that they meet and then same thing from the bottom off the bottom and then a second row now the center of this is going to be covered by our banner but we've got that cool texture on there all right time to adhere our square and our banner to the card. I like to take a little bit of glue behind the greeting and get that. Roll up the edge a little bit because I think it looks cute that way. And put it over our decorative layer. And then liquid glue on the whole banner. And get that on there. Okay, let's set that aside and let it dry. Get our Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and these cool tree dies. All right, so outline dies are gonna work just like any other Stampin' Up! die that you use. They're gonna cut a little bit different from most of the Stampin' Up! dies that you use. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna drop that on there. We're also gonna drop a bit of brushed metallic cardstock on there. I've got these two adorable little stars for the top of the trees. And there are three of these little star dies in the spruced up outlines die set. So you can do them all in one pass, I love that. Now, when we line up these outline dies, we're gonna fill entirely the aperture, the window there. So you're going to line up your image with the inside edge of the die. We're going to do that for both of our trees. Just get them lined up there. But when you see how this cuts, I think you're going to be kind of surprised at the possibilities. Pop three over the top, give it a crank. All right, so we have our cute little stars, perfect for tree toppers or for embellishments. Little metallic stars make very affordable bling for your cards, especially for mass produced Christmas cards. But now I'm gonna lift this up and take it away and you'll see that these trees cut out this perfect little outline and the tree. We're gonna use this on our project. We're gonna put this back into the stamp set case so that we can use it on another project. We can mix and match. So we could cut next time, say a green tree, garden green, and then it'll have a little white outline. You can do two separate pieces. Just really cool way to add an extra function to the same die set. So you can have your stamped cutout image, but you can also layer the images almost like um, the outline of a stained glass or a cookie. Do this part in crumb cake and do this part in garden green and you've got the cutest little tree cookie.
you see? I'll be doing more with this spruced up bundle to show you the possibilities. All right, so let's put aside our outline, get our card and our sample. Got some mini Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm gonna add some to the back of both of my trees. Give them a little pop. All right, everybody's sticky. Let's adhere our tree. Don't cover your greeting. Uh-oh, stuck to my finger. And then our little tree. Take a dab of liquid glue on the top of each of those trees. And then got my take your pick tool and then take that apart here for just a second. Pick up my little star and use the point of the take your pick tool to just help me place that star right on top of that liquid glue. Super easy. Even if you have dexterity issues, this tool is awesome. Last little steps here are our embellishments. I love these two new embellishments from Stampin' Up! We got a real red garden green combo pack. Awesome for Christmas into Valentine's Day with this real red. Use this one for Christmas, use this for Valentine's and you'll get double your use out of that. I'm gonna use the real red this time and just tie the teeniest little bow I can manage. So you can see I've got about maybe an inch and a half of ribbon and I'm gonna fold back, it's on the spool so we don't waste any. And then loop around, so loop, and then swoop around, always over the top. Loop, swoop, now tuck. Do you see the space that my finger's holding open? We're gonna tuck, and then pull. Hold the center, pull the tail. Hold the center, pull the tail. Tighten it up, do that method, you get a perfect bow every time. Hold the center. A little finesse until you get what you want. And you've got the perfect size bow with everything going in the right direction. Then you can cut away from the spool. And there. Now we're detached. Change the angle on this piece. And this is all the waste. If you tie from the spool, you'll never waste more ribbon than you have to. Add that with a mini glue dot. Right at the bottom of our trees. Don't cover your greeting. Cute. And our embellishment, we've got adhesive backed seasonal sequins. This is a, a favorite current embellishment right now. I love this package. You get four sheets of seasonal sequins, white, Sweet Sorbet, matte gold, and then this gorgeous garden green. I did white for this card. Of course, you can do anything you like. I thought it looked kind of like snow flurries on our little Christmas tree forest. So I'm gonna do five, three, kind of floating up, and two dropping down from my greeting here. And there it is. There is our shortcut card, number two, Christmas card. To get the shortcut card sketch number two, buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com. The link is in the description box below. If you've got any questions, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Feel free to text or call. The phone number's on the blog. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.